finding periodic orbits in a dynamical system can be difficult. It can be so frustrating. But sometimes the right approach is to try to eliminate their existence. To rule out the existence of periodic orbits, that's really helpful. That's something that we've done sort of implicitly before. Do you remember when we were doing population models a few chapters ago, and we looked at the Lotka-Volterra competitive exclusion model, where we classified all the equilibria, we got the local behavior, and we said, that's it. We just pieced everything together and concluded what was going on. But how did we know that there wasn't a periodic orbit somewhere? How do we know that there isn't some, some cycle around, maybe it came from a bifurcation, who knows? This is very difficult to determine. Here's a result for doing just that. This is called the bendixson Luck criterion. It works in continuous time 2D systems only. Here's the result. Let's say that you have a vector field, F, of the form Fi plus Gj where f and g are functions of x and y. This needs to be a continuously differentiable vector field on a simply connected domain in the plane. Simply connected means connected and no holes inside of it. Okay, if for some scalar field rho on this domain, the divergence of rho times f is non-zero on this domain d, then the dynamics induced by this vector field has no periodic orbits contained within D. Now, it's kind of a mouthful. You're going to have to read that once or twice to make sure you understand the hypotheses, the criterion itself. The first time through, it's probably a good idea to ignore that row. Assume that it's equal to 1. See if it makes sense in that case. Now, is this weird? No. No, it's not. It's green. It's... Green's theorem is what's really behind the proof of the bendixson dulac criterion. Here's the proof. Let gamma be a parameterized periodic orbit of this vector field contained within this simply connected region D. Now, we're going to show that this can't exist. The way we're going to do so is by saying, because it's a periodic orbit, the vector field, and any rescaling of it, is tangent to that curve everywhere. Let R be the region within D that is bound by that periodic orbit gamma. It's going to be a disk since D is simply connected. Now Green's theorem says if you integrate the flux of this vector field along the loop gamma, that is you take the integral of rho f dotted with the normal, integrate that with respect to arc length, then because gamma is the boundary of this region R, this line integral, this flux, is equal to the double integral over the interior of R of the divergence of the vector field rho times f with respect to area. This is the flux form of Green's theorem, which you may remember from your multivariable calculus course. Now, because gamma is a periodic orbit and tangent to the vector field, how much flux is going across gamma? None. Zero. No flux. So this loop integral on the left is zero. That means the double integral on the right is zero. And if we're integrating a function over a disk and it integrates to zero, that means, since it's continuous, that it has to attain a zero value somewhere. It has to have both positive and negative components in order to cancel out. That's it. That's the proof. And in fact, from this proof, you can, you can get even a little bit better. You might be able to allow the divergence to be zero on some isolated sort of small regions as long as the divergence only takes on one sign. So maybe it's like all positive and then zero along a, a point or a curve or something like that. This proof would still hold in that case. That's a really nice application of Green's theorem. Let's see how this would work in an example. Consider the following system in 2D continuous time. dx dt equals y, dy dt equals minus x minus y plus x squared plus y squared. Now you could find equilibria, do things like that, but 
let's just ask the question, are there any periodic orbits? Here's how we're going to try to use the Bendix and Dulac criterion. I can write this as a vector field, y i plus quantity minus x minus y plus x squared plus y squared j. Now the first thing to do is to just take the divergence, see what you get. The divergence of this vector field is the partial of the first term with respect to x, 0, plus the partial of the second term with respect to y. That's negative 1 plus 2 times y. Now this is not so good because this takes on both positive and negative values in the plane. And I'd like to rule out periodic orbits over the entire plane. From this alone, I could rule out orbits that live let's say above a certain y value or below a certain y value, but that's not really what I'm looking for. So now what I'm going to do is rescale this vector field by some scalar field rho. Let's let rho be equal to, hmm, I don't know, uh, e to the minus 2x. <laughs> what happens in that case is that if I take the divergence of e to the minus 2x times this vector field, then the partial of the i term with respect to x is now y times the derivative of e to the minus 2x. That's e to the minus 2x times negative 2. Okay. The partial of the second term with respect to y is e to the minus 2x times quantity negative 1 plus 2y. Ah, look at what happens. We have a whole bunch of cancellation and I get e to the minus 2x with a negative sign out in front. That is never 0. And so by Bendix and Dulac, this means no periodic orbits whatsoever in this system. Now that is swell, but it leads you to the question, where do you get that row? How do you know what rescaling to use? If you try one and it doesn't work, how do you know when to stop? Do you just keep trying things until you run out of patience? What if there is a periodic orbit? Then you could be trying this method forever and not getting anywhere. Shrug. I got nothing. That's the downside of this method. When it works, it's a miracle. When it doesn't work, well, there's not much you can do. But when you are looking for periodic orbits, the first thing that you should do is try to eliminate them using something like Bendix and Dulac.